How you guys doing today? Happen to have a game against Big Dave. Got this one off of my Twitch stream, and I have had a couple of people ask me at this point, you know, where where do you get battles? Where can I battle you? Vice versa, that whole thing. There are only going to be two places for the most part that I'm going to be looking for battles. Uh, the first and main one, probably 95% of the time, is going to be on my Twitch. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with the rest of the social media that I'm on, including Twitch, uh, if you click the read more on the description, that's where you can follow me on a lot of that stuff. Uh, going to be streaming a lot more lately, but in terms of catching me on the other place i do have a tumblr a twitter as well as a facebook page uh for this i have an instagram under the same name as well but i don't really use it that often uh point being uh 95 on twitch follow the other social media five percent is on discord i do have a discord for subscribers it's pretty much just open to anybody um if you want an invite message me or uh, you can at me on twitter message me on tumblr uh or if you have a facebook you can message me uh through that to my elo Colo page and uh i'll send you a uh, invite to it so in the meantime, I chose that entire, like, minute to basically talk about all of my social media that I had going on instead of the teams whatsoever. Um, honestly, we, we, we can, we can, it's not the first time I've done it, it won't be the last time, so. Uh, I don't know what the hell Silverly does, but I figure I'm just gonna go into Trevenant. Uh, I kinda had a vague idea, since most of the Silverlies I've seen so far have been T-Wave Parting Shot. So if I, want, if I wanted something to be paralyzed, I honestly wanted it to be Trevenant. Uh, not because I actually do appreciate it being slower, but because I don't appreciate taking residual damage from burn or toxic. So if there's going to be a condition that I wanted to have, I would actually much rather it be paralysis than anything else for that reason. So uh, we can see that he is more specially oriented as well because we do see a T-Wave followed by a flamethrower as I go for the curse. Um, cool thing about this set, you guys have already seen this set, I've already you know, display the set many, many, many times. Uh, for those of you that were a part of the Battle Tree stream, you guys saw 50 games worth of this thing putting in a shit ton of work. Um, but I get to curse, I get to eat my berry, bring me back up, you know, a quarter of the way, and then at the end of the turn, there's a 50% chance for me to harvest, and then bring me back another uh, quarter of the way, which will put me there, and it's pretty good. Uh, but he's realizing that this is probably not the best Pokemon to deal with this, because Flamethrower is only doing around a third, and he decides to Parting Shot out into something else. I don't necessarily mind him Parting Shot, because I ended up going for a Leech Seed anyway, so I appreciate him pivoting. As long as I don't miss the Leech Seed, I think that's going to be the more important part, because uh, now I get residual off of the leech seed and uh if he knocks me below half uh i will actually don't think at this point come to think of it i have my berry yet i think i used it to get back up into the green and i don't think i harvest it this turn either that i try to protect uh but i think i do at the end of this turn that he goes for an hp fire ice and i do think this is specs damage for the main reason that a silvely a Pokemon that has 95 base special attack, I'm not sure if he's invested in it or not, um, that a flamethrower is doing less than a uh, not stab hidden power fire, hidden power ice. So definitely the inkling I get from this, you know, with the first encounter I have with it, is that that is specs damage. So the only reason I'm actually staying in here at this point uh, for one more turn is to see if I can harvest my berry again and to get a little bit more leech seed recovery as well. I don't like switching this thing out unless I have my berry, unless I'm absolutely forced to, um, but the leech seed, you know, the leech seed recovery, this is all passive damage by the way. This is literally just me staying in here with leech seed and getting back some HP. So as you can see, it has its merit. Uh, you got to be careful using this thing around grass types, but as you can see, it, there have been no grass types that have switched into this. I don't think he has any grass types uh, for this thing, or for him to go into to try to counteract it. But even four said grass types, they can't sleep powder or leech seed me themselves, so I can curse them, and I can just sub protect and kind of force them out. Because curse, curse takes a whopping amount of damage off, and the, the citrus berry definitely helps. Um, Enough of me gushing about Trevenant though. I switch into Bruxish on the same turn thinking that that is HP Fire Ice and I figure I can switch in on that just fine. Uh, but it turns out he doubles out into Pincer on that turn so I'm like, well, uh, there is a list of things that I do not want a Bruxish to try to deal with and that is a uh, Mega Pincer. So I decided to go into my Zerka Tree right now. I don't think he knows it's Scarf, but I think he has a feeling at the end of this turn that that is the main reason that I brought it in. Um, that and he doesn't have a way to knock me out directly with Return. Um, since that's pro that's probably looking like a pretty close roll. So if he goes into Silvely uh, to take the hit, it does not take it very well at all, but then again, Circuit Tree is a super, super powerful electric Pokemon, and it looks like that is actually just a normal Silvely, as far as I can tell. 
if it's a different type uh oh no wait yeah it's normal because it's got lefties so i like it i like normal silvely with lefties uh two-way parting shot all that stuff i don't have one myself but you can best believe i'm gonna have a box full of these damn things so uh after the volt switch i'm noticing that you know with my uh dog guard here uh I, he's probably low enough for me to kill off with a thousand arrows so i go for it get rewarded and that thing's off the map but if I had, you know, a dollar for every time that this Mammoth Swine switched in uh, after the Dog Guard was out, I would probably have, I, I, I set that up to be really dramatic, but in reality, I think I'd probably only have like two or three dollars, so I should probably keep my day job if that were to be the case. But uh, I go back into my physically defensive Porygon 2 uh, to take the Icicle Crash just to see how much it's going to do. Uh, I think I might have mentioned in a previous take or earlier on in this video, if it wasn't a previous take, my bad. Uh, if it was earlier on in this video, I'll just restate that it is a physically defensive one with Trick Room. I left Trick Room on it from me wanting to use it on a different team, and I needed a physical wall at the time. So I was like, you know what, Trick Room is a nice thing to have on it, and it turns out it actually benefits me very nicely as long as I can keep it alive for Dragonite, because if the Dragonite Dragon Dances and I Trick Room on that turn, it's at my mercy. I can Ice Beam first, I can recover first, it doesn't have access to Extreme Speed yet, nor does it have a real solid way of being able to take me out, you know. So, uh, this is a very unfortunate turn. This is probably the first time that this Trevenant gets taunted and in case you weren't keeping track at home of its moveset I don't have any offensive moves on this thing whatsoever this thing is pure grade A taunt bait so I'm forced to go out into Porygon 2 again and uh, I have tri attack so at least I have that sort of reliable stab for it but he actually chooses to double out immediately right now into pincer and I don't mind this turn of events at all because trick room is still up and I am actually able to just ice beam on the turn that I think he goes for swords dancer right here to try to see how much damage he's able to do uh, to my Porygon too but the main problem with that is he saw how much he did with Icicle Crash, so I don't like that he ended up going for a quick attack here to try to get off a decent chunk of damage, when in reality it was probably only around 25%. Um, if that, maybe a little bit over, but honestly, uh, that in terms of being traded for the, blah, 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 in, that in terms of, you know, you're trading your pincer for that amount of damage and I can just recover it off, that's not exactly the best thing going on there. Uh, he did have his top Finny, but he also did not know whether or not I had Thunderbolt on that Porygon too, so I will give him that much, definitely. I have not revealed Tri-Attack at this point in time yet. Uh, but he actually switches in Magnezone, and I think he suspects that I'm going to be scared of it. I think he tried to force a double right here, and I think he actually did, because I don't know at the... No, wait, no, he didn't. Psych, that's actually coming up a little bit later. Um, I figured at that range, uh, you know, with natural bulk and everything, despite the fact that he was specs, I would maybe be able to take it. Uh, I do reveal in like a minute or two that I actually don't take it well, um, but I am able to take it, so... I don't plan on going for Trick Room right here because I don't care if this thing is faster. It's not going to be able to status me. I'm not going to be able to status it. Uh, it is doing, you know, a decent amount of damage to me, but not a lot to the point where I'm really necessarily going to want to be forced out. On top of that, he doesn't have recovery, and I do. So this is a very slow uh, downhill battle. Like, or This is more of an uphill one for him. Uh, because his Moonblast will maybe be able to drop my special attack at some point. Um, but honestly, until then, I can just go for maybe about four, five, six try attacks. As tedious as it seems, that's probably going to be the best way to do it. Because Moonblasts just really aren't doing that much. I'm physically defensive and I'm still taking like maybe, you know, 20% each from them. Just Porygon, Porygon 2 is really good right now. There's not a lot of knockoff users. And, uh, you know, you can run a physically defensive, you can run a specially defensive. Does a decent amount of stuff. Porygon is a great Pokemon right now. Uh, you know, the defensive one for Porygon 2 and then Z conversion for Porygon Z. A lot of Porygon on this channel, and I am a big fan of that as well. But... I do go for a try attack on this turn again because, you know, that was my previous plan to keep going for it on the top of Finny. And right here is where I actually learned how much I'm, I'm going to end up taking from this. It turns out that I'm actually a little bit higher than I was before on HP, but I think I ended up trying to go for a recover. If you paid attention to how much, how much that did right there, by the way, 115 down to 15, if he hit me earlier instead of switching out to Tapu Finny, I actually probably would have died, or I would have died on that exact roll, but now that I'm actually able to tell at this point 100% for a fact that he is Specs and that is not Trevenant just dropping the ball, uh, I decide to go out into my guard dog because that is the best thing to do from here. I'm going to go for 1,000 arrows in order to try to hit something, and he brings in the top Infinity again, but two 
I believe actually from there is going to be able to take it out. Um, despite how defensive this thing, he might have invested it. Uh, this is a very offensive Pokemon. Thousand Arrows is not a weak move whatsoever. And, um, you know, it doesn't have access to any immediate recovery. It's also slower than me, unfortunately. So, or, well, unfortunately for him. I'm actually really glad to take this thing out. This thing took like seven, eight, nine hits and is still around. So to actually get it, you know, wiped off the map is absolutely fantastic. The unfortunate thing is he does still have Mamoswine in the back, so I can't really do anything with this thing yet. And this is also not a uh, Choice Bandit variant, otherwise uh, I, think I, I think I probably would have shortened that time a little bit in terms of Thousand Arrowing on uh, Silverly as well as maybe uh, Tapu Fini. I'm not 100% there, but uh, I feel like uh, Porygon 2 has brainwashed my mind into just like trying to stall verbally until that thing comes back in and then I can catch up. Because Mamoswine still can't do shit. Uh, Dragonite, definitely still not doing shit. I definitely picked the right Porygon for the match this time. Uh, in terms of the special threats being able to be taken out by other things on my team and the physical threats, Porygon 2 pretty much just handles them 100%. Um, I ended up going for an Ice Beam right here because I think I was at full and I wanted to see how much it was going to do through multi-scale. Turns out it does around half. Actually, no, I wasn't even at full. I guess I just really wasn't scared of it, or, you know, if I was... Like, look at that. That that does less than the than the quick attack from earlier. I think that did 31, and the quick attack did, like, 40, the SD aerial a quick attack. So, D-Knight uh, ain't, ain't, ain't one thing to pouring on whatsoever. Like, it brought me below half, and that's about it. The Magma Zone is the main thing that this Porygon 2 has to get through, and then outside of that, uh, you know, I think I can deal with the Mamoswine, but I figure at this point, I think I can just Thousand Arrows into Extreme Speed, um, or no, the Mamoswine's still at full, excuse me, I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself here. I do still have a Bruxish, is the important thing, and I was like, well, it is a jolly life for Bruxish, I actually have a bunch of other things at this point too, but I really, really, really just wanted to try using Bruxish, and it turns out that a strong job boosted crunch is still not even able to knock out the Magnezone from there. Uh, but I forgot that I was part Water Psychic, like halfway, or I was Water Psychic instead of just Psychic through the game. Uh, which was nice, it means I was actually able to take the Flash Cannon. I think he realized that if he went for, uh, T-Bolt, that I could have gone into, uh, Dog Guard, or Dog, Dog Guard, Guard Dog, Dog Guard, what, whatever you want to call it. I could have gone into that again and just Thousand Air at a bunch of shit. So, uh, from here, I believe he ends up trying to go for an Ice Shard to knock me out. Um, I don't remember if he's Life Orb or not, but I know he does not actually succeed in taking it. No, he wasn't. He might have been Sash. Uh, not sure what happened there, but Psychic Fangs with the stab is actually able to do a decent chunk, and that not being super effective is uh, good to go for me. And now I am the one that comes in on him. I am the one that goes for the extreme speed to out-prioritize the Ice Shard, and I am the one that finally knocks the dang Mammoth Swine out. Um, so, I mean, Dog Guard is able... To, I just... Uh, I mentioned this on Tumblr, but it really throws me off that Dog Guard has a glowy butthole. I'm sorry, he's got a blinker there. You're probably never going to unsee that. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of the game. Uh, moral of the story here is A, that Trevenant set can be taunted a lot. Uh, B, Bruxish is a little underwhelming. C, Dog Guard's pretty cool. Weird design. Uh, D, Porygon 2 is uh, an extremely bulky asshole. Anyways, that's going to do it for this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can leave a like rating, comment, subscribe, do your thing. At this point in time, it is probably two weeks from now from when I'm actually recording this video. I've rendered out a bunch of content, and I, it's taken everything in me not to just publish it for you guys. But I'm staggering it out so you guys have some stuff to do, and then I can do some streaming slash take care of whatever I need to in real life while not feeling like I'm ditching the channel. So as a friendly reminder, again, all of my social media is in the description and all that stuff. And uh, I think that should do it out of me. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.